Welcome back to The Daily Rundown. I'm Dan Morfitz. Thank you for watching Channel 7. Now you can get in touch with the show at The Daily Rundown on Twitter, or if you want to email us, please do. Email dailyrundown at thatstv.com and you could have your something to say on the show. And on that, Zia, what is your something to say on the last Daily Rundown of the week? Well, for the last few months, there have been a regular spate of stories about, mostly in the States, of people, Muslims, getting on planes and some member of the public finding them a little bit disturbing, complaining to the, the cabin crew and that Muslim person or family being removed. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, it was you know, depressing to read these stories, but sometimes I, even I as a Muslim would think, well, that guy's beard was a little bit out of control. He did look a bit dodgy. And, you know, and he was saying these kind of things. So I can understand, even though it's nonsense, because by then they've been security checked mm. they're on the plane. And you think, and also, they're in, it's America, and different rules apply in America. It's silly we season in America. We never do that kind of thing over here. Yeah. And today, there was a story about this Muslim lady from Leeds who went on her honeymoon uh, to Turkey, and on the way out, and this woman, I should uh, emphasize, she does, you know, you would never think she was a Muslim. There's no sort of hijab or, even, or niqab, nothing of the sort uh, to identify her as a Muslim. Anyway, on the way out, uh, somebody from the cabin crew noticed suspicious behaviour on her part. She went had a honeymoon. On the way back, that suspicious behaviour had been reported uh, to the authorities and the police were waiting for her when she landed at Doncaster Airport. And it turns out the suspicious behaviour was she was reading a book on Syrian art. Just a book about on art? A, a book on art. Syrian art and culture. And you think... Well, what on earth? And this wasn't a member of the public, this was cabin crew. Uh, and it was uh, uh, Thomson Airlines, Airways, who said that, well, you know, there was perhaps over-caution. She might have been frustrated at the over-cautious approach that was taken by the cabin crew. You think there's nothing over -caught. This is bonkers. This is complete madness. And you have training for your staff. What do you train them? Mm. As soon as you see the word Syria or Arabic or black hair or brown skin that could constitute suspicious behavior maybe the the main fear was the words art and culture on a book found in doncaster <laughs> <laughs> and they they thought this isn't right this isn't right there's something wrong here why why aren't they on a stag do why aren't they on a hen do art and culture in doncaster it probably scared them too much it probably scared the cabin crew they've no, never seen somebody reading a book on a plane. I don't know though, I have more sympathy actually. I know the system is nasty the way it takes up such a case, but I kind of feel sympathy for the person who's raised the alarm because I come from, I'm come from Indiana and we never had passports, I never had anything, any idea. I, I used to say to people, you know, they keep, they keep the clocks differently in Europe than in in America. Yeah, we're a few hours it ahead. Took, it, no, no, it's a 24-hour <laughs> clock. I'd never heard of it till I was about 17 years old. So you got to realize some people have really a very narrow upbringing. I know lots of people in, in Manchester who've never been to London. So they've never seen the two. But this is, this is, so when they this see is not Syria, being, this is they, not being overzealous. This is not a lack of education. This is just I, pure stupidness on the case of the cabin crew going, Somebody's reading a book about Syrian art and culture. Therefore, ergo, they must be a terrorist. Uh, I mean, if it had been a random member of the public, I might have been a little bit more sympathetic. But you get, you know, you get people who have different levels of intelligence and understanding and, and cultural, social experiences. But when you've got, um, you know, somebody in authority, a member of the crew who's undergone certain training, mm. and you think, oh, if that person, whatever concerns they had, firstly, you could ask the lady. Oh, well, that's an interesting book you've got there. What's that all about? Yeah. That'll be and one to way to have the police. It. And to, have the, to notify the police. And even before you notify the police, you, you might want to run it by a colleague. Oh, she's yeah. reading that, the book. That's the thing. That, yeah, so I think if so they'd just steps. explain to a colleague and then they could just have a little glance. And because it's not just It'll this all just, you know, go down again. But at the moment, everything's hyperactive. and, and It's being, not just this individual that to is to blame. It's their supervisor, their immediate uh, superiors, and the company for saying we need to report this to the police. It, what, what do we do next? If somebody's reading a book about Hitler, get them to uh, a war crimes tribunal. If somebody's reading a book about a serial killer, just think, well, they must be wanting to kill. It's, it's, it sounds like a ridiculous stretch 
of of the truth, but this is what's happened in this case. And the Hitler analogy is perhaps very apt when you look at the the sort of the you know the the increase in the far right groups throughout Europe. You know, that's a very real concern, mm. and you know, and th so it's not some sort of you know flight of fancy. That's yeah. a very real concern. And yet, if somebody was reading a book about Hitler, no one's going to think, "Oh, suspected neo-Nazi here. I might want to." Uh, and and this woman, yeah. as you were quite rightly said, she wasn't wearing a niqab or anything to show herself off as Muslim. She just had black hair and a different colour skin. That's basically. But she's, it. she's a Yorkshire lass who goes to Turkey on a honeymoon, I'm guessing. And, and, and to be singled out like this does seem a bit. Peculiar. Well, she uh, went on to wrong. say that she actually works in anti-radicalisation. She's an NHS worker, <laughs> and that's you know, she you know deals with the youth. Now, for I think you know, for somebody like her, okay, she you think she's professional, intelligent, articulate, and educated. So she might withstand this experience in a way that perhaps other people couldn't. And so we have, we have to ask ourselves that, you know, sometimes the things that we're doing, does that actually take people away from radicalization or are we pushing them then, further yeah. you know, down that if path? If that's what's expected of you, then you may as well adhere to what people... But we have lots of people who live in their houses with no newspapers, no magazines. They wouldn't pay for a whole year's subscription to any magazine. And they have no books. There are lots and lots of people like that in Britain. So I think that that actually is something that we, we we'd benefit we if it would We should never change. lower ourselves to the lowest common denominator, should we? We should no, always but we want have to, to but raise we, ourselves. We have to help. If I, I'd like yeah. to be the manager in the airline and help so that the, the if there's staff that come from such a background or you know, don't understand that people study art, um, you know, then, then they can talk to other staff and share. I think it's you just know, a shame that this a gentle environment gone up to such a chain this. of command in this airline for the, this action to have taken place. Yeah, and that's, that's the sadness of it. And also, to be fair, I have a degree of sympathy, as Wendy says, for the individual because the individuals that are product of their environment. Yeah. And so that's where I think questions have got to be asked about what's the culture that we've yeah. created that's led this person to be so suspicious. Yeah. And, yeah. That, and when you look at some of the, the headlines in, you know, in certain sections of the media, you think, well, it's hardly any surprise that these are the people who, as you say, they might not read books, they might yeah. not you know, watch mm. you know, uh, informed uh, debate about these issues, they might just yeah. see the headlines, and those headlines are having an impact. Yeah. A pertinent something to say. Thank you for that, Zia. Mm -hmm. Now, Wendy, what is your something to say tonight? I guess oh. it's, is it something rude? Because I've no, seen the word. it's fun, it's fun. And, and the, the word scared me, spelunking. Spelunking, it's all Excuse about me? spelunking. <laughs> Well, I wanted to talk about caving, so I thought I would really share with you some fun, because everybody wants to have fun, right? And I think when I was a teenager, I had more fun than average. So, because I, I went horse riding, cycling, I used to have ice skates of my own for the winter time, and I was allowed to go spelunking, caving, with uh, groups of men who were experts in mapping the caves. So I was actually really interested in the mapping, and I thought I might show the viewers some pictures from Ooh. caving, yeah? So we're going to have some bad example here, Bear Grylls. That's not you. Bear Grylls went down a cave with his camera crew after 24 hours of rain and he put them all at risk and he had no guide and no equipment. So very bad on Bear Grylls. Now this, this picture shows a map of the caves. It shows the pipe where you might go down into it by climbing and then the horizontal part which is typical of a limestone cave and once the water gets in there it floods really fast. Uh, mm. Here's the pipe part of a cave. This is actually in, in, the, in USA. There's two men climbing on one rope there to get down into it. They're abseiling. So you can learn climbing skills as well as caving skills, but you need a guide. You have to have a guide for this. Now, I used to go in caves like this. This is in Indiana, where I come from, in America. And I used to sleep in the cave at night. So the, the men I was with would permit me to, and they'd go and sleep out in the van. And then you just lie on this mud bank and try not to make any impact, you know, don't leave any trash. This is the light we used to use. It's a lamp from carbolic oh, wow. acid. Yeah. You put calcium carbide in the bottom, water in the top of it, and then the water drips through and it releases an acetylene gas that's uh, it, it's warm and it, <laughs> it would blow up if you didn't light it. Wow. So yeah, you can carry that and you see the hook so you can, you can set it up in the cave and explore. You could look for fossils in the cave. There's a lot of fossils. It's really, really interesting to go caving. Should you get up to much spelunking now around Greater Manchester? Not at the moment, no. I, I don't know why. I think it's a really good thing to do. So I might try and get onto one of the guided tours. You can go down at Altrincham, or you can go down near Eam, 
on the train that, that runs through to Sheffield. There's plenty of places for caving. Oh, down in the peaks and stuff like that? Yeah, that is in the Peak District. And there's, a, there's quite a number of caves as you go northward through Yorkshire. So actually, um, southern Indiana, where I come from, is very similar to Yorkshire in the, the forests and the hills and the way the hills are actually folds of sedimentary rock. So I remember at the age of 13, 14, learning about geology because um, the cavers would explain to you what kind of risks you could take and what kind of risks you shouldn't take. So if, if you see that the rock has been fractured, then there's going to be a lot of movement around that fracture. Or if you see that the rock is stable, then you know you can probably just climb up rows in the rock if they're really stable. But if you see crumbly bits and cracks up and down as well as horizontal, then you've got to be really careful. It's, you make it sound so romantic. Do you think it's romantic? It was very yeah. muddy, very dirty. Now, what, what I wanted to say was I think schools should be teaching kids this. So I think we should have school trips where the kids go, the teachers don't go, the kids are led by guides who are expert, you know, and come out muddy and then go home and home takes care of the mud. I don't see why we're not allowed to have any mud. I remember doing it as a school trip. Did you? We, we, went, we went spelunking. We went through very, very, very narrow uh, crevices. Cracks, yeah. Uh, with a helmet on, a light, yeah. and a boiler suit. Great. And it was fantastic. Great. Yeah, that's really good. And there was always one kid at the back who'd get stuck and cry. Uh -huh. That wasn't me. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's like very that. hard. If, if you, <laughs> I, have a, I think at the moment, in the last few years, I, I do have a little bit of claustrophobia. And it's arisen because the, the big buildings that we have now, sometimes you cannot find a way out. Mm. So that feeling, oh, I can't get a way out, it is really scary. But one of the things you can learn from climbing and from this spelunking is how to overcome your fear. So it's like, oh, it's a question of how you handle your body and your breathing and your, your, the muscles of your back. You've got to be able to relax out of it and just say to yourself, it's okay, I've got friends, you know, I have a rope, I have a map, I have the torch, I have a lot of resources, I can rest. So you, you, can, with you can recover. Yeah. So well, it, you need to be with experts. So, so Bear Grylls is really very naughty, extreme a, sport. He's a bit of a wasp, He's an extremist, he? right? And I take, I take offense at these extreme sports. I really do. I think they're macho. They're, it says kind of masculinity en masse. And you know, nobody's any good unless they're at the top of some sort of pinnacle. But that, that's mm. impossible. That means 99% of people are not a success. But if you're so interested in, in spelunking, have a look at it and see what yeah. you can do in the British Caving area. Association. Oh, fantastic. Off you go. Thank you for or that. Or down idea. you go. Or down you go. Thank you for that. <laughs> right, well. we're going to go to another break now, but please do not go away. I'll be back with my guests in just a minute with some of the more, let's call them, strange stories of the day here on The Daily Rundown. <laughs> 